We have quite a bit of news on the Google Stadia and so many people are confused by what it is, how it is going to work, and there is a lot of information that Google has specifically been hiding from us and even hid in the news conferences about the Stadia. And they are very important pieces of information for a consumer, so I thought that we could go through that information and also talk about the games that it will be launching with. Because I think this service, honestly, is an absolute freaking joke and I do not know why anyone would buy into this scam after only two presentations with very little information on it. Since I have not talked about it before, the Stadia is a cloud a gaming service operated by Google claiming to be capable of streaming video games at a 4K resolution at 60 frames per second with support for high dynamic range to players via the company's numerous data centers across the globe and if they are using a sufficiently high speed internet connection and that is where the first point comes in that was not really talked about. <laughs> Google, Google, Google. So the Stadia Connect press release event, um, they did not go into details about the requirements, but Google says it can provide a steady 60 frames per second 4K streaming stream with a bitrate of 35 Mbps. So that is about 16.75 gigabytes per hour of 4K streaming. That is a huge amount, because if you do not have an unlimited internet plan, that equals to about 65 hours of streaming if you have a one terabyte plan. This is a huge turnoff for people that have an average internet connection and average internet plans. Most people do not pay for an unlimited plan when it comes to internet because they never imagined actually using it. And this is why they didn't actually go into detail with it because they knew this would be a huge turnoff to people to the service. They also did not talk about the latency issues, which is very important because they originally said that they were working out some, some bumps with the latency problems, yet they have not talked any more about it. Why would they expect anyone with half of a freaking brain just to say, yep, going to buy this new whatever it is because it's gaming related and they're calling it the future of gaming. So when it comes to the launch in November, you will have to buy the $130 package, which comes with a non-Stadia branded Chromecast Ultra and a controller that honestly looks like a Power A Nintendo Switch controller that you would drop once, it would shatter, and you would never be able to use it again. But the controllers sold separately, if you wanted another one, would be an additional $70 compared to the other ones. Most of the other controllers, like the Microsoft one, is $59, the Nintendo Switch one is $59, and the PlayStation 4 is $49. They are out of their minds with these prices. Then in later 2020, they will allow people to use the free versions or the basic versions of Stadia memberships. And honestly, I do not think that it will make it into 2020. I do not think that this will take off of the ground. I just, I cannot see anyone leaving their consoles or their PC to use this service that could potentially run like shit. So I thought that we could go through the games lineup since the games are what matter and at launch there will not be a ton of titles and if there are latency problems at all whatsoever, most of these games are not going to actually be functional. You are not going to be able to play any of these games. They are very time reliant. So let's just take a look at the games because the, I think that there are quite a few good ones that are are going to be on the Stadia or usable with the Stadia. I don't want to say on because it's not a console and I feel like that's going to confuse people even more, but let's just look at the games. So this is the games list that it will be launching with in November of 2019. Do you realize something? Most of these games are already out. More than half of these games are already out, and you know what that means? They're most likely going to be trying to charge people $60 for these games. Now, they have not said if they are going to be charging $60 per title or if older titles will be discounted or if every title will be discounted because there are some newer games on here. Doom Eternal will be new, Rage 2 just came out but it's fairly new, Baldur's Gate 3 is so exciting, 
meaning that Baldur's Gate 3 will eventually be on it, or it will be launched around the same time. So exciting. Um, Borderlands 3, it will be launching with Darksiders Genesis. A lot of these games are going to be new, but not the majority of them. They have not said, they have not specified the price structure for the Stadia. They have not said that the games are going to be $60 at full price, or if they're going to be more, or if they are going to be less. Don't you think as a consumer you should probably know the prices that you are going to be paying for games on a on a new type of service? They have not said at all the prices, and that is a huge worry. As someone that hates to spend $60 on video games, I think video games should be $40. That is one piece of information I would want to know right off the bat, and this is this is a a piece of information that we have heard nothing about. But otherwise, the game's lineup does not look bad as long as we are not going to have to pay $60 for Mortal Kombat or $60 for NBA 2K, $60 for Samurai Showdown, $60 for Power Rangers. I think that newer games, of course, Darksiders Genesis, Borderlands 3, the games that I listed, would be okay at a $60 price tag because they will be fairly new, but what are the other games going to be priced? In my honest opinion, I just do not think that the Google Stadia is going to take off the ground. I think that they are coming up with a fairly decent games lineup, but in November, none of these games are going to be worth that price. Is it really worth it to buy into this when you have consoles, when you have a PC? And my answer is no. I understand that they want to be able to tell gamers they can take their games anywhere and you can be a competitive player from anywhere. But I just do not see this being executed properly. We have no further information on it. We have no clue of the price structure. And I want to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Feel free to use the comment section as a discussion zone. Feel free to also join the Discord. We've been talking about it quite a bit there. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And of course, if you did not, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either which way. But I hope that you guys did enjoy this video with some information and some of my thoughts on it. But I will talk to you guys again in the next one really soon.